everyone, Mike Scan here uh, and another three minute Thursdays as I take three minutes and look at subjects and topics of the Bible in three minutes or less. Now before I get started, don't forget to like this video and uh, subscribe to our page as well as share it. Click the, uh, click the bell icon down there right next to the subscribe button so you'll, you'll be notified about every time a new uh, Thursday, three minute Thursday comes out. All right, so today's topic is love and marriage. How do we move our lives to a place of marriage that really brings glory to God. Now you might be married, be thinking about marriage. I want you to stay to the end of this video because I've got something I want to share with you that I think you'll really like. Uh, what does the Bible actually say about marriage and how do we have a marriage that actually glorifies God? Do you understand that your marriage is meant to glorify God. In a world that is trying to redefine marriage, God has already spoken on the issue. God created marriage. It wasn't created by man. It wasn't created by a government or anything like that. It was created by God. Now, and the question then is, what's the role of marriage, but what's the role of each person in the marriage? Do we have specific roles? And really it is, but I wanna share this. The ultimate role of marriage is to reflect Christ and the church. I wanna say that again. The ultimate role of marriage is to reflect Christ and the church. In Ephesians chapter five, verse 22 through 24, it tells us, wives to your own husbands, submit unto your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as Messiah also is head of his community, himself the savior of the body. But as Messiah's community is submitted to Messiah, so also the wives to their husbands in everything. And then to skip down on down to 25, it says, husbands love your wives, just as Messiah also loved his community and gave himself up for her. Ephesians 5, 28, a little bit further down, in the same way, husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife, watch this, loves himself. See, marriage is more than just an expression of love between a man and a woman. No, it's a reflection of God's love and his church. So it's safe to say that when we walk in a healthy marriage, you and I are showing the world a healthy love for Yeshua and his bride, the church. Even in the beginning, we see how marriage is going to be a reflection of the Father. In Genesis 2.18, it says this, it says, Adonai, the Lord, God said, it isn't that, that the person should be alone, talking about Adam, I will make for him a companion suitable for him. The word companion here is from the word helper, and it is the, uh, it is the only other time used except when Yeshua promises that the Holy Spirit would be our helper. Both of these words are from the same word, and it's a feminine word bringing these two together. Finally, the Bible teaches that we're to agree as touching anything that will be done by our Father in heaven, Matthew 18, 19. One must understand that the language spoken in this verse in Matthew 18, 19 is covenant language. Now, why is that important? The greatest human covenant made is between a man and a woman. Now, I'm not talking about a, a covenant between God and us. I'm talking about a covenant between two people. The greatest one ever made was between a man and a woman. We know this because in the Torah, any time a covenant was made, here's something that happens, is that when two people came together to make covenant, there had to be blood to seal that covenant. Now, how does that affect marriage? Well, in marriage, when two people are in marriage and they are married, when a man and woman comes together to seal those vows on their wedding night, Something is supposed to happen, and the hymen breaks, which is in the female, which causes the shedding of blood. Now, tradition has it that the women of the family would wait until the marriage was consummated, take the sheets and parade those sheets around to the town, showing the community that a covenant had been made between the husband and the wife. They would literally parade that sheet around showing people that blood had been spilled. Proverbs 18, 22 says, he who finds a wife finds a great good, and he has won the favor of Adonai. God wants you to have a marriage that is blessed, and he wants to use that to bless you. No matter where you are in your marriage, or if you've already violated God's purity before marriage, can I encourage you that there is grace and forgiveness for those who will repent. Man, you can start over, start afresh in your spirit and there. And if you're married or considering to be married in the DFW, it's what I want you to hang on for. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, within about an hour's drive from Terrell, Texas, we want to invite you 
to our Epic Life Marriage Conference. The details are gonna be in the link below, right there in the more, hit the more, it'll open up and you'll see our link to go re registered and take back your marriage and let's make marriage reflect God's goodness and His grace. So I hope to see you there uh, at our Epic Life Marriage Conference right here in Terrell, Texas. It's gonna be held February 25th right here in Terrell at the Fairview Motel. Look down for links below. God bless you, we'll see you soon.